Hi, this is Paula Jay, uh, delivering cybersecurity talk, and uh, this is a part of a content series uh, where um, I'm absolutely proud to interview prominent personalities in the uh, industry within IT. And today I got with me Johan Arvid Mark. Hi. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for coming, definitely. And today we're going to cover subjects that are absolutely interesting uh, because they're going to be related with deployment and security. And uh, if you want to get more wisdom, more knowledge within that subject, make sure that you're going to watch uh, our interview. So, well, let, let's start. I'm pretty sure, guys, that you've uh, met Johan before because you are engaged so much in different kinds of social media. You've got a blog, right? Yeah, I have the uh, deployment research blog. This is where I post most of my findings from my consulting work. And I've been, I've been doing deployment since I was, you know, 16 and that was a That's few good. years ago. So. Okay, that's, that's, that's quite a long time, yeah? Yeah, it's a lot of good stuff there. Uh, I used to have a blog back in the day, it's called Deploy Vista, it wasn't so good. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one is better. The fame, the fame uh, is still out there, yeah? Uh, yes, on the Vista. Yes, yes. But uh, anyway, you also have a Twitter account, yeah? Yes, I've been tweeting a lot since about 2010, give or take, and it's been my absolute main source for information these days. Uh, if you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter. That's, uh, I say that in basically every session I ever present. Cool. So make sure that you, you're going to follow Johan on Twitter because uh, he posts so many different things that you guys want to know regarding deployment. Yeah, and, and not only follow me, also check the people that I follow because I do follow people that are, you know, industry experts in, in the field doing well, a lot of good postings, a lot of good information. Perfect. So, so uh, Johan, of course, is speaking at uh, Microsoft Ignite, different tests, different kinds of conferences. So uh, if people want to see you, they can also see you over there, yeah? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, great. So uh, time, I think, for a couple of disturbing questions. Yeah? Okay, okay. If, if you don't mind. Should I be uh, worried? Um, no, <laughs> it, it wouldn't be that bad, <laughs> okay. uh, actually. But there are a couple of things that I want to <laughs> ask you since you do the deployments. One of those is that, uh, from the security perspective, within the MDT and uh, Config Manager, uh, w when you do the deployment, you are able to, and that's what kind of people do, uh, have the um, file where you put your username and password for the deployment purpose. Yeah. Like, th does this have to happen? Well, the thing is, both, uh, both solutions are using credentials in one way or another, uh, both to make sure that Windows P, when you start the deployment, can access remote file servers and things, and also for Windows to be able to join the domain and things. Mm -hmm. And that information can absolutely be con encrypted, and Config Manager does that by default, for example. But if you know the right tools, the right scripts, the right com objects to call in, in Windows P, you can actually retrieve that information. Mm -hmm. So if you do have physical access to the machine, it's, it's it's kind of hard to prevent everything. That's, yeah. I mean, that's why you make a living of, you know. It's a full access, yeah. Yeah, but, but uh, you can at least restrict those accounts, making sure that they, for example, cannot log in interactively to other machines. Mm -hmm. and there are some plenty of good articles out there on how to secu secure them, lock them down as, as much as you possibly can. Okay, that's cool. And uh, another question that I have for you is that, uh, well, it would be lovely to see security settings being deployed at the customer side. Is this something that is happening from your perspective in practice? Do customers actually ask for hardening of the image before the image is getting deployed? There is. Um, mm -hmm. It's a bit of a mix. Some, some organizations, they're actually enforced to do that because of regulations, like mm -hmm. federal rules that allow them to, or they have to, to do that. So mm -hmm. Microsoft are releasing new baselines for Windows 10. They were released just before Christmas, but if, if you work in that type of environment, you have to use them. And you basically have two ways of dealing with it. Either you try to lock down your image. Mm -hmm. The downside is it becomes very static. Mm -hmm. The good news is it also works in a workgroup environment. It turns out it's quite tricky to have a workgroup client getting policies from a domain that is not the member of. Mm. So you don't have a choice. Yeah. But when you do have a domain join, and then you can use uh, central group policies from Active Directory, and that's much easier from a deployment point of view. Oh, that, that's good to know. What about uh, the, the, the machine that is during the deployment? Are there any things to look at? Like when the, when the image is being deployed, like there have been recently some news about what can you do to just that particular machine. So what do you think about that? Ah, you, you're talking about in-place upgrades and things? Yeah. Uh, a certain this. Finnish person? Yep. Yep. Sami? <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, he really recently posted a, a pretty 
uh, not pretty. Really heavily visited blog post mm -hmm. about uh, security risk during the in-place upgrade, mm -hmm. where an end user, anybody being at, in front of the machine, can mm -hmm. press Shift F10 yeah. during the entire in-place upgrade process. But there has been there for a while, right? Uh, only since Vista. Yeah. But the thing is, Microsoft didn't support the in-place upgrades until now. Okay. So it's not being used much. Yeah. But now they are pushing out upgrades, and the user is there waiting. They're having lunch. You know, mm -hmm. they want to get back as soon as possible. And then it might be hmm, interesting. Click and being access, able to access the system. But that, that's not that easy because that can be managed, right? It can be dealt with. So on my blog, I, if you search for the word F10, you, you can find a PowerShell script mm -hmm. that disables the Shift yeah. F10. Uh, permanently on mm -hmm. that image. The only thing you have to do before you start the deployment, obviously, but... So, so could we summarize it this way? The deployment done well, yes? Yeah. We'll just not have issues like this. Exactly. If you use a sequence to do drive the upgrade, that you also have the option to do things before you start the deployment, during a deployment, after deployment. That's how I like to deploy upgrades. If you ever guys thought that deployments are easy, it's... Uh, it's, I don't think it's the case, actually. <laughs> no, the challenge with, with, with deployments in general is that they are touching into so many different systems. Mm -hmm. so, so you need to know a little bit of everything mm -hmm. to work with deployment. So okay. it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of things to know. Cool. And uh, what about the Credential Guard? Because Credential Guard is a new feature within Windows 10. It's a very nice security feature. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be enabled automatically throughout the deployments. You can have a sequence, first of all, configure the machine for mm -hmm. UEFI, for secure boot and all that, TPM enabled and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you can have the sequence installing Hyper-V because, well, it's part of Hyper-V now, mm -hmm. and enable it. Mm -hmm. and do the additional reboots that are required to, mm -hmm. to deal with it. Um, something that customers have run into that they weren't prepared for. For example, I did a live stream event with two, two co uh, colleagues, uh, Kent and Jurgen, mm -hmm. and we talked about security and credential guard in that session. Mm -hmm. And he just came back from a customer visit up north. Mm -hmm. uh, their apps work perfectly fine mm -hmm. with Windows 10 as is. Mm -hmm. But after enabling credential guard, 10 of their most critical apps did not work. That's quite crazy. Yeah, and we had another customer. They were using wireless with password access, mm -hmm. like pre-shared key stuff. Yeah. Also didn't work anymore. They had wow. to switch the certificate. So these are like little Just because thingies, of yeah? credential guard. Oof. Yeah, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, it's, it's a good, good tip because uh, we've got, uh, we, we see customers that are asking about, oh, let's implement Windows 10 because we've got all the hardware in place. Yeah. And uh, credential guard, we can enable this. Let's, let's roll out all the operating systems out there. And application in general probably will not be that much challenging, but if you enable credential yes. guard, you can have a problem. Exactly. I usually say to customers, don't worry too much about apps because in general, if they do work in Windows 7, they will work in Windows 10. Mm -hmm. And for this customer, they did work, just not with credential card enabled. So that's like, Ugh. But But to figure it out, that's uh, another challenge. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously. Uh, and uh, well, in our discussions, you also um, mentioned um, that uh, there has been an interesting vulnerability within the deployment that you are able to click in the corner and then you are able to get access somewhere. What's that about? No, it was, uh, I know what you're uh, looking for here. Yeah. Uh, normally in a config mounted deployment, you have the ability to press F8 to get a command prompt to access the system. Mm -hmm. uh, but a friend of mine, Jürgen, the same guy as before, yeah. uh, he and another Johan, apparently a lot of them in Sweden, okay. uh, he wrote a background thing for the deployment. Mm -hmm. So you have to right click in the left hand corner mm -hmm. and you get a password. You have to type in a password and that password enables F8. So you huh. cannot get access to the system without actually having to know that password. But could this be disabled, for example, within the deployment too? Can you like turn it off? That, yes, that, you can yeah. absolutely d d uh, disable it completely, but then mm -hmm. troubleshooting is a royal pain. Oh, okay. <laughs> so hmm. you want to have it, but you don't want to have it. Like, you know this, security, yeah. you give some, you lose some. Absolutely, <laughs> Co comfort versus usability. Yeah, so. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. So um, I got I got two more questions to you. They okay. are from the soft, a little bit more softer area. Okay. And uh, what, what the first question will be related to uh, young people, like if they want to jump into the deployment area, what kind of stuff should they know? Like, because they, they are like seeing their career starting right now and they're like, we want to do deployments as you do and so on. So they're like, hmm, what am I supposed to look at to get more information? What do you think? 
Well, first of all, I recommend if you want to start in working the DevOps deployment field, you should start by learning things that are a little bit outside of it. Learn the connecting systems, learn about servers and Hyper-V and mm -hmm. Active Directory and group policies and things that deployments are connecting to because that will give you a lot of better understanding mm -hmm. of the process. And once you know that, then you can start to focus down uh, more narrow into the deployment stuff. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you need to love change. You need to love automation. If you don't like that, I don't think the moment is for you. Yeah, the stuff like PowerShell? PowerShell is very shiny, yes. We should know that, yes. Okay, do, do you find PowerShell as a useful tool within the deployments? I bet absolutely is, yeah? Uh, it's, uh, yeah it's a useful asset, it's critical. It's, it's absolutely, critical. you need it. Oh, it's, yes. a, it's a good tip for, for the starting uh, guys that PowerShell is definitely something that can be used everywhere in deployment too. Yes. And uh, it's, it's a very important thing to know out there. But uh, okay, what about the guys that are within the enterprises? And they're like superb, they've got like um, some deployment already made, they manage their applications and so on. They just want to be perfect. So what kind of skills would you recommend for them? First of all, I, especially if you work in the config manager platform, mm -hmm. I, I recommend you guys to learn what's going on behind the scenes, learn mm -hmm. the processes, because that allows you to troubleshoot things in the right location. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if Microsoft get in like 10 complex support calls for config manager, mm -hmm. you can bet that five of them are related to OSD because mm -hmm. they're, again, it's touching so many different systems. Mm -hmm. So learn what's going on, learn the processes, learn to debug efficiently, and typically life is a little bit easier in, in terms of deployment. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. So, a couple of words for fast for summary. Uh, today we have talked about um, the different types of uh, interesting security uh, issues and different useful tips that we can use within the deployment. Yes. Um, and uh, basically, what is the key message? That's that within the deployment, obviously there is a lot of automation going on, and in order to make the deployment well, you have to really have a deep knowledge into what's happening within the operating system. Yes, and also behind the scenes of the uh, deployment solution, absolutely. Yeah, that's, yes. the, that's the basics. Yeah. And then on the top of that starts uh, comes over Config Manager, yeah. which, uh, by the way, I've noticed that uh, Whoever has something to do with the Config Manager, it must be a super patient person, isn't it like yeah, that? It kind of helps because Config Manager is a little bit slow in doing things. Uh, if you're a little bit impatient, um, you can always open up all the log files because they will be rolling in the background, so at least you can follow what's going on. Okay. Uh, that helps. So it's not that like you do the deployment and then you are like reading the news. There is something to do during that time, right? If you really want to, you, you can absolutely review the log files. Cool, very cool. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for thank the you. great interview. Yeah. Uh, guys, uh, if you've got some questions, absolutely post them in the comment sections. We hope you enjoyed it. And make sure that you follow uh, Johan on uh, Twitter and you check check out his blog because there's a lot of lot of wisdom out there and if you want to get more information make sure that you're going to click on the link uh, within within our interview to get uh, access to the blog post that is related of course with the uh, stuff that we were talking about today thank awesome. you so much and see you next time thank you thanks